All right, guys, welcome to our weekly lending pad uh, training. Today is October 17th, a beautiful day here in California. I want to welcome everyone who are uh, who is joining us here for the first time. Welcome. This is our weekly lending pad training. As you may know, we have uh, two trains throughout the week. One takes place on uh, Tuesdays. And the other one takes place today, every Thursday. So we have two perspectives. One is from Lending Pad themselves. Every Tuesday, they go through a very in-depth Lending Pad training. Um, however, we want to take it up another notch. And this is why we have our EMC customized Lending Pad training on Thursday. This is where we bring in our systems trainers. So as you may know, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to LO Support at emortgagecapital.com, and we will uh, connect you with our systems trainer, Ms. Nicole, who is here in the call. She will go, go and get going in the head and, and uh, teach us a lot of great things with LendingPad. All of your requests that come in pertaining to LendingPad, Nicole will handle these requests uh, personally. So uh, with that in mind, I do see Ms. Nicole ready to go here sharing her LendingPad screen. Um, so with that, Ms. Nicole, thank you for giving us the opportunity to learn from LendingPad, and you feel free to take it away. Thanks, Danny. Hello, everyone. My name is Nicole. I'm the systems trainer here at eMortgage. I host these trainings every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Um, I typically will switch it up and cover certain topics. Um, lately, however, I have just been doing um, an overview of frequently asked questions, common issues that I see loan officers, loan assistants, and processors run into, um, and most importantly, how to properly set up your file with the minimum items needed in order to be able to request comp on funded loans. Um, so I'll be going through all of that. Um, if you do have questions, please pop them into the chat. I will have time at the end for an open Q&A um, to assist with you guys if there's something that you need assistance with if, that I didn't cover in today's training. So I am sharing my screen. Uh, first, I wanted to start off with your lending pad user profile settings. So within your dashboard or your pipeline view, navigate up to the upper right hand corner and click on your name. That's how you will get to your user profile right here. Click profile. Okay, next, right below that, click Edit Profile. Now, within this screen, it will show your general information. Um, it will show what user roles you're associated with, which one is set as your primary role. Um, under the Preferences screen, this is where you will obtain your POS link, your application link to send to borrowers or to input into your email signature line under the Apply Now section. You can click this little button here on the right to quickly copy the link to send to your borrowers. Now, please keep in mind that the link cannot be manipulated in any way. Um, it has to remain exactly like that. I know that's a common question that is asked. Um, unfortunately, if the link is manipulated in any way, the application will likely not appear in your pipeline and will go under just a generic corporate um, pipeline view. From there, we'll have to go in and manually assign to you. So. Just keep that in mind, always copy the full link. If for whatever reason you have a borrower that applies, they send you confirmation that they applied and you still don't have that application in your pipeline, please email LO support and we can locate that loan for you and make sure that it gets assigned to your team um, and to the specific loan officer if needed. Um, also within this screen under notifications, you can toggle on and off the email notifications that you receive from LendingPad. So status changes, um, just pretty much any email, not email notification that you get from LendingPad that you might not want to receive, you can update your email uh, settings right in here. Lastly, the actions tab. This is where you will need to go to input your credit credentials so that you can pull credit and run AUS in LendingPad. Um, this is a very common issue that I see a lot of loan officers will at first input their credentials here at the top under asset verification next to Advantage Credit. Um, this has to be done under the Credit Report section next to Advantage Credit or whichever credit company that you're using. Um, there is a section for your regular credentials, username and password, and then also a section for your soft pull username and password. Um, just note that if you have your soft pull credentials, I'm sorry, if you have your hard pull credentials in uh, soft pull or you soft pull and hard pull and you 
select soft pull as the credit report option that you want to run, it will likely pull a hard pull if you don't have your credentials input into the system the right way. So just keep that in mind. If you have soft pull credentials, make sure that they're input right here. And then same with your username and password for just your standard hard pull credentials with Advantage Credit. Um, nine out of 10 times, there's an error when running credit. It has to do with the credentials not being properly set up. So I would just always make sure that you go in here and make sure that your password and your username are added next to Advantage Credit under credit report. So I'm gonna go back to my profile. Um, at a glance here, back to dashboard, um, you or under pipeline, if you want to import an existing 3.4 file, you will do so by clicking up here in the upper right corner, import. This is where you can drag and drop an existing 3.4 file um, to appear in your pipeline view. Now the loan type will always need to be flipped to lead and the import type will need to be switched to standard formats. Once doing that, the campaign box will appear. It should automatically pull the team name or the campaign that you are associated with. However, if for whatever reason it doesn't, you can go ahead and manually add it there. You can click here to import the 3.4, or like I said before, just drag and drop. Once done, you can click import new lead. If for whatever reason the, um, file is corrupted or there is something wrong with the 3.4 file, you will receive a red message box just letting you know what the issue is. If not, it will ask you if you want to import another lead and that's how you know that your 3.4 was successfully created. So back to the pipeline, I'm going to hop into a test file. Okay, so like I said, just wanna run through some things that um, come up quite a bit. So first off, under the borrower section, so under overview, borrowers, click edit. And also before I move forward, always note that you can navigate to specific screens on the menu on the left hand side. So if you click overview, it takes you to the general overview. However, you see the subcategories, borrowers, dates, details of transaction, etc. If I click borrowers, it will highlight that section for me. Um, however, if you just are on the overview page, you can scroll through all the available sections. So whichever way you prefer, there's always a quicker way, you know, that you can get to the desired screen. So I'm going to go to edit, edit borrowers. Now, a common issue that I see is when reissuing credit or running credit for a borrower and a co-borrower, sometimes there is an error where it won't pull the co-borrower onto the report. Typically, this is because the borrower and the co-borrower are not linked on the application. So within this screen right here, you can see Nicole test applicant type is borrower. Now under the co-borrower, their applicant type must always be borrower. Now I know that sounds silly, but it cannot be co-signer. Co-signer will essentially just not take into consideration that borrower when trying to reissue the credit report. Um, so always make sure that both borrowers are in fact listed as a borrower for applicant type and that they are linked together. You can do this by clicking under the co-borrower section here and the other borrower on the application will appear. Once doing so, it shows that they're linked. Um, you can unset the co-borrower if something changes, but always make sure that they are tied together if they are in fact uh, a joint borrower and co-borrower. Let's say you want the co-borrower listed first. There's a button right here where you can swap the borrower and the co-borrower as well. Click save once finished. Um, another area that I see quite a bit is under the terms and mortgage section. So right here in the overview screen, or I can go on the left and click terms and mortgage, um, is that a lot of times LOs will get stopped um, for not having a loan program assigned to the file. So always make sure that not only just the loan type, but the loan program is completed. You will get a hard stop when trying to save your dates at the end. Um, to properly status your file funded. So just best practice would be to get in the habit of having your loan program added. Now, as you can see, I have this set as a non-QM 30-year fixed with the loan type of other. Whenever the loan is non-QM, hard money, commercial, or reverse, the loan type must always be other. And then um, that will trigger applicable programs for that loan type. So since I have this marked as loan type other, I'll click these three dots and three lines right here to view other available loan programs. So as you can see, we have our non-QM options, fixed and interest only, commercial fixed, hard money, reverse. So you can also click this drop down up here where it says fixed 
just to show the adjustable rate options only. So let's say that this loan, I want to flip it to conventional. I will change the loan type to conventional right here. When you change the loan type, it will automatically wipe out the loan program that's assigned. It's loading, so just give me a minute. Okay, so a list of programs was updated. The system has reset the current loan program. So this is typically what I see the program area looking like when LOs have problems saving dates or moving their file to the next status. Um, it's kind of hidden, but these three little dots and lines right here is what you would need to click on in order to change your loan program. Since I've changed the program type to conventional, it's now going to show different programs than what I just showed you before. Um, again, you can click fixed up here to show adjustable rate options. Um, but for the purposes of this training, we'll just assign it as a conventional 30-year fixed. All right, now click Save. Okay, so another feature I wanted to point out is when adding a seller credit to a loan that's a purchase, this must be done in the details of transaction section. Again, under the overview tab, you can click on details of transaction, click edit. Um, seller paid closing costs is not where you will need to put your seller credit. Um, under the details of transaction, you'll hover over here where it says add purchase credit. If you click that, it'll give you a separate drop down of options to choose from where you can select seller credit. It will add as a line item and then from there you can add your seller credit amount. Okay. Uh, next, wanted to run through the closing fee quotes. Um, if you are looking to get essentially smart fees, it's not smart fees that's integrated into the system, but it is an option that we have through Settlewise LLC to pull a fee quote estimate. Um, this is going to be under the actions tab right here on the left. The actions tab is where you will pull credit, reissue credit into the file, run AUS, um, access print forms, generate pre-approval letters, um, and also pull your closing fee quote. As you can tell, I've already pulled a closing fee quote for this loan, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and run through the process again. So you will click send. Now keep in mind, clicking send next to these options doesn't automatically send any sort of request. Um, there are other steps that appear. I know that's a common question as well is when wanting to run credit or something, um, clicking send right off the bat isn't gonna just immediately fulfill that request. So. Keep that in mind, there are going to be a couple other screens you'd have to click through. So when you click on closing fee quote, it should already be pre-populated here. Contact is Lodestar. Uh, credentials are the company credentials within LendingPad. The request type is going to be create. Again, click send request. It's not completing the request just yet though. Okay. So once you click send request, it will generate the closing cost estimate calculator. Now the information at the top will pull from your lending pad file. So the state, the loan amount, the county, the transaction type. Um, the only thing that is not populated is the service title agent. Like I mentioned before, this is through Settlewise LLC. That will be the only option. So make sure to click that. Before clicking calculate in the middle of the screen right here, you can scroll down to just see any additional fee types that you would want added to your quote. So let's say you know that there will be a subordination um, or a quick claim deed that needs to be recorded, anything of that nature if you want the estimated fees for that to, so that you won't be under disclosing, then go ahead and click yes. And then you can generate your fees. So once everything has been double checked, click calculate. And then it will pull you to the closing cost details page where you can see the estimate of the fees. Now, the number will always be rounded to the next dollar. So if you want it to be exact, you can uncheck this toggle. And as you can see, this e-recording fee over here changes from $9.50. It will default to be rounded though, which will show $10. Um, you can save this to PDF. Um, also, I'm sorry, before I jump ahead, I wanted to cover that if you hover over a certain section and it outlines in blue, it actually will show you a breakdown of that fee. So $263 for the recording fee, as you can see, I hover over and it's outlined. If I click on that, 
it takes me to the breakdown of that fee. So $91 for the release fee, $172 for the mortgage fee. I can go back. Now, before I click get fees up here in the upper right corner, uh, if you want to order title with Subtlewise LLC, you do have that option to do so through LendingPad. Uh, you can just click order title in the upper right hand corner right here. And it takes you to a title order page. So you would just need to fill out this information up top, the borrower's name, the loan number, uh, your email address or your processor's email address, whomever you want to be the main point of contact for the order, the property address, and then again, who you want to be the main point of contact. Any special instructions, mortgagee clauses, um, if you already have a payoff, et cetera, you can go ahead and add any instructions uh, for the title company in there and then drag and drop supporting documents like the 1003, borrower authorization form, et cetera. Um, once done, click submit. You will get a notification that the order was received and it's typically fulfilled within about two to five days depending on where the property is located. So back to the fee quote. Uh, now that I have my fee quote, I want them to populate into the disclosure screen. So I'm going to click get fees. And right here it says closing fee quote updated successfully. So now I can close out of this screen. I can click on my disclosure screen, which is right below actions under the menu. And then I'm going to scroll down to make sure that my title fee is pulled over. So as you can see, Subtlewise LLC, here are my estimated fees. Um, I previously pulled title fees from another company in this test file with Summit Settlement Services, so disregard that. Um, uh, Subtlewise LLC is where we just generated the closing fee quote through LendingPad. So now that we're in this screen, um, this is where you can update and edit any fees associated with the loan if you were to generate a LE preview for your borrower, or if you just like to have your file completely up to date um, fees wise, then you would just click edit up here and you can go through the sections of the disclosure and adjust your fees accordingly. Uh, back to the actions tab though. Um, so like I said, closing fee quote, you'll go here, you can click view to see your previous requests that have been pulled. You can click update an existing um, fee quote. If you change the loan amount in the file, by clicking update, it will just bring you to the same exact page and the same steps that we just went through. But let's say you change the loan amount, then it would pull that updated information from the file. So now that we are in the actions tab, I wanted to go through um, the print forms. So over here under other actions, you can generate a pre-approval letter right here. Um, pre-approval letter if you click preview. These are Arizona specific pre-approval uh, letter parameters. Just click save and continue. And it will generate your pre-approval letter for you here. Um, if you want to generate print forms, um, either a VOE form or a borrower authorization form, um, a blank letter of explanation form, anything of that nature, you can access the custom print form selection that we have. So click send preview next to print forms under other actions. It will, de uh, I'm sorry, it will default to the custom print form selection here. As you can tell, there's just a ton of documents. So if there's something that you need, it's likely in here. Um, let's say I want to get a letter of explanation for my borrower. You can actually send documents through LendingPad to be e-signed via DocuSign through this screen. So let's say I wanna send my borrower a letter of explanation about um, a address on the credit report. I will select the document that I wanna send. I will click e-sign document. And then this is where you can actually pre-type the letter of explanation for your borrower. So for, you know, to whom it may concern, I do not own that property, something along those lines. Um, now, keep in mind that even if you aren't sending your, this to your borrower to be e-signed, if you do generate this form or certain forms, it will prompt a print form parameter to where you can add specific information directly to the file, or I'm sorry, directly to the form before generating it. Um, in this case, I clicked e-sign, so I'll click save and continue. Now keep in mind, in order for this to function properly, there has to be an email address for the borrowers in the loan application and lending pad in order for this to push out. 
So as you can see, it's pulling the email address that I have on file for both borrowers, along with the access code for DocuSign. Um, once ready to go, you can click send request, and then you'll get alerted once the borrower has completed their signing. Same thing if you wanted a borrower authorization form, uh, verification of employment, things like that um, can typically be searched and found in here. The other option above custom print form selection is package. This is the broker initial package. This is not the initial disclosure package and will not fulfill the requirement for initial disclosures. This is simply just something um, that you can get together and send to your borrower if you want to, um, but it does not fulfill the initial disclosure um, process. I can't stress that enough. So it consists of an e-sign agreement, intent to proceed, borrower authorization form, uh, mortgage loan origination agreement, et cetera. You can generate this and send it to your document, or I'm sorry, send it to your borrower to be e-signed, um, or you can save it as a PDF to be emailed. Totally your call, but I have had it come to my attention where, um, you know, someone was under the impression that this would fulfill the initial disclosure package, and that is not the case. Always make sure that you're registering your loan with the lender uh, that you will be sending the loan to and following their protocol on getting the initial disclosure sent out um, within the proper amount of time. Okay, so while we're still on this actions tab here, I'm going to move over to the credit report section. So right here, right above the closing fee quote, I'm going to click send. Uh, right off the bat, do not ever input your credit card information or the borrower's credit card information into this section right here. Um, I'll have Danny touch on the smart pay link in just a moment, um, but just there is really no need to ever have any credit card information input into this section. Um, above this is the request details. So Advantage Credit, if that's the company that you're using. Uh, use credentials, my credentials. This will pull from your user profile settings that I covered earlier. A uh, credit report, since I have my borrowers linked on the application, it gives me an option to pull a joint report. If I didn't, they would still just be individuals here. So if you have a borrower and a co-borrower, and then let's say their son is on the loan as well, you would run the joint report for them. Then you'd come back in here and select the individual report for that third borrower, if applicable. Um, if it's a new credit report, always make sure that order new report is selected. If you are trying to pull a soft check, you can select soft check, but again, can't stress enough, make sure that your soft check credentials are input into your user profile under soft check credentials. Um, if this is a credit report that you're reissuing into LendingPad, let's say um, there was a correction that had to be made or it was already pulled outside of LendingPad, whatever the case may be, may be, you need to reissue the existing file ID number into LendingPad, select reissue existing report, and then from there, you can type in the file ID number that is associated with that credit report. Uh, Danny, would you mind touching on the smart pay link process? That seems to be a lot more popular these days uh, with the request coming in. Yeah, absolutely. So just so you guys know, Advantage Credit does offer something called the smart pay. And basically what smart pay is, is a link that is created by Advantage Credit that you guys can provide to any uh, applicant bar for them to invest in paying for their own credit report. So rather than you covering the cost, you just forward that link over to the bar. They will uh, provide their personal information as well as submit uh, payment information to have their credit uh, run. Not only does it give you the, uh, um, I guess, the authorization for you to pull their credit, but it also allows you so you now have to spend that extra uh, funds for that credit report. Once the credit report is pulled, you will be notified with a reference number. Uh, once that reference number is received, you will basically do what Nicole is showing you there on your initial request. You're going to select the request type as a reissue. You're going to enter the reissue number. And then at that point, you can proceed with uh, your normal process. So you can do that. You can reach out to Advantage Credit. I will put the email in the chat. But basically, it's uh, CA support at advancedcredit.com. And they're pretty quick about getting that set up for you. Once you uh, send the email, it's usually about, you know, maybe an hour or so at the latest for them to send that over to you. Um, another thing is when you do reach out to them, they also have the same uh, link process for softballs. So if you guys are maybe interested in just in, um, doing a softball, for um, various reasons, they can also set you up with a smart pay link for softball as well. Um, and then for the 
a regular softball account, you know that you need to reach out to Advantage Credit and they will issue separate login credentials. But it is a great option for you to take advantage. The Smart Pay link, just reach out to Advantage Credit uh, or us and we'll reach out on your behalf for them to provide you with um, this link. Perfect. Thank you so much, Jenny. Okay. And just to piggyback on that, I'll say this a million times, but as always, just email LO support um, if you need assistance with getting that smart pay link set up or pretty much anything pertaining to Advantage Credit, Lending Pad, et cetera. Um, if you aren't sure, always double check and just email LO support at emortgagecapital.com to be safe. Um, now, before I leave the action screen, wanted to touch on the AUS section. So I'm going to click send. Again, this is not going to automatically run your AUS. Um, so Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, you're going to run DURLP, request type, everything will de uh, default properly. Submission type, if these are your preliminary findings, which typically it is, leave that as is. Um, credit report provider, again, making sure that you have the proper credit report provider selected for the credentials that you have in your user profile settings. Um, and then use credentials will be my credentials. And we have DU and LP login credentials already built into lending pad at a company level. So you do not need to input um, user, spe uh, user specific credentials uh, for yourself to run DU or LP and lending pad. Um, it will ask you for the credit report identifier number um, and to confirm if it's a joint report before you run your request. Now, I know that some lenders require you to release your final DU findings. Um, if that needs to happen, um, you can actually release your DU findings directly yourself in LendingPad. The only thing that you cannot do is release LP findings. So I'll show you how to release your DU findings, but if you do need LP findings released to, let's say, NextBank, um, email LO support. Those requests actually do come to me, and I can go ahead and take care of that in a matter of minutes. Um, but DU findings, like I said, you can release yourself. What you'll need to do is click submission type and change it from preliminary to final. Um, from there, you will get an option to select the lender on who you want to release the findings to. So let's say we want to send this to NextBank. Um, again, credit report pro uh, provider, credit report identifier, uh, your credentials, everything set up. Once you click send request, uh, confirm with your account executive or your underwriter that they can now see these findings on their end and you should be good to go. Um, same process with LP, um, once you email me, I manually go into the Freddie Mac portal, I release the findings, and then it's almost instant that they confirm that they have them. Okay, so that is pretty much what I wanted to cover in the actions tab. Now I wanna switch gears, go back to overview and cover the, difference, uh, the differences between correspondent and wholesale loans within LendingPad. So we'll start with correspondent. Um, UWM is the only lender that we're using for correspondent loans at this time. When your loan is correspondent, you must add the lender information under the overview screen into custom fields, which is right here at the very bottom. Or you can click custom fields on the left hand side under overview and it takes you there as well. Again, this only applies for correspondent lenders. So click edit. UWM is the only option. And then from there, you will input your UWM number. Now, UWM correspondent loans all start with a 1-5. So let's say you have a brokered UWM loan and you attempt to input the lender information under this section with your brokered UWM loan number, which always starts with a 1-2. It actually will not let you save. So if that happens, then you know, oh, shoot, I need to put that under the wholesale lender information for here on the right. So for the purposes of this training, We'll make that correspondent. Also, best practice, um, assign your lender upfront. I forgot to touch on this in the AUS section, but if you're trying to run AUS for a VA or FHA loan, and there is not a lender assigned in the custom fields or in the wholesale lender information section, you will not be able to run AUS. Um, so if you get an error message for like EIN, lender ID, something along those lines, it's more than likely be that because you haven't added your lender information under wholesale lender custom fields. Uh, when drawing loan docs in the UWM portal, you are prompted to input the MERS ID number. That can be located in your lending pad file under the loan additional screen right here on the left. So not overview, but loan additional. 
this breaks out into subcategories as well, but you can click directly on loan additional. And it's the top left box under general tracking where you can locate your MERS min ID. You can copy this and put this into the UWM portal when drawing your loan docs for correspondent and you're good to go. Um, I know that some of you that are familiar with point know that with this process, we would previously have to click a button to regenerate the number within point, um, but that is not the case anymore. Um, you just need to simply copy and paste the number that's already in there and that will suffice. Now, I haven't seen this happen yet, but if there is no MERS ID number in the file, um, you can generate this yourself. Again, I have not seen this happen. They always create once the loan is created in LendingPad, but worst case, if it is, click Edit under General Tracking. You can hover over this wand right here. It says Generate MERS Min ID. And this will generate your MERS ID number for you. Again, don't click this unless this area is already blank. Okay, now, when inputting your critical dates, which I will go over in a moment, you will not be able to status a correspondent loan closed or funded. Closed meaning the date that they signed their final loan documents and funded, obviously, the date that they funded. Correspondent loans, you will only be able to status up to clear to close. And then our team at eMortgage will um, update the closed and funded dates when the loan is closed and funded. Now, Comp cannot be requested on correspondent loans until the loan is purchased. Um, so I know some of you will ask, you know, hey, why can't I see this loan in the drop down? And at a glance, I can see that it's still in post closing status. Always make sure that the loan is in purchase status and allow, I would say, about a day or so um, from that status date to check the intranet to see if that loan is in the drop down. Again, I'll go over the uh, critical date section. Just wanted to touch on that before I flip this loan to a brokered loan. So I'm going to add, or I'm sorry, I'm going to remove this. Now, assuming this is a brokered UWM loan, I'm going to click edit, assign my lender. Now, always make sure to add in your lender loan number. Um, I know sometimes if you haven't registered the loan yet or haven't submitted it to HQ Processing, whichever applies, you might not have your lender loan number. Um, it won't hard stop you from assigning the lender, but just remember to go back in and pop in that lender loan number so that there's no delays at the end when you go to try to request comp. Once you click save, the lender's default fees will appear. Um, any fees that you've previously input into the disclosure screen will remain, as you can see. Um, but the lender specific default fees will pull over. If something's different from what you're seeing in their portal, obviously you can edit an update. Um, just don't be alarmed when you see this page pop up whenever you're assigning your lender. Okay, so let's assume this loan um, is a UWM brokered loan and it funded today. So I wanna make sure that everything is updated in my loan so that I can request comp as soon as possible. So um, first off, you wanna make sure that your loan program is added in addition to your loan type, appraised value, loan amount, borrower information, validated property address, all of the basic information is at least filled out. Like I said, you don't need to go through and make everything perfect as far as itemizing the fees and whatnot, it is encouraged. Um, that is best practice. However, for the sake of this training and going over minimum requirements needed for the file, um, just make sure that everything is up to date as best as you can. Um, you will get a hard stop, like I mentioned earlier, for not having a loan program, so that is a must, um, or an interest rate, which you can add in under the terms and mortgage section as well. Um, but once that's all been validated, then I'm gonna go in and add my critical dates. So critical dates are under the overview tab right here. Click dates, which is also always in the upper, or I'm sorry, over on the right-hand side right here. So you'll click edit, edit critical dates. So like I said, I'm just gonna go through hypothetical on dates here. Um, this is a lot to look at right off the bat. You do not need to input all of these dates. However, if you like to keep track of your files a certain way, by all means, utilize the dates how you want to. Um, but these are the dates that have to be in the loan um, for funded loans before you can request comp. This does apply to correspondent loans as well. Um, but 
we already covered the closed and funded dates not being an option to be added on those. So I'm going to show you how those can be added here on the wholesale loan. Uh, lead will always be the date that the loan was created. Application taken. I'm going to assume that the application was taken on September 2nd. As you can see, an LE issuance date auto appeared on the right-hand side. It's just a reminder of when you would need to disclose to the borrower an LE. The next required date would be LE issued, which is right above that. I'm going to assume that the LE was issued on the 3rd of September. Now, after that, the next would be approved. So back over here on the left-hand side, approved. Let's say that this one was approved on September 6th. Um, some of the fields are time stamped, so I would just say make them as accurate as you can. Um, the dates do need to be in order, so if you're trying to status uh, closed and funded on the same date, just make sure that there aren't any other dates that you know might accidentally be past that, past that date because um, it will just keep it stuck in that status. Also, you can't status anything in advance. Um, so if you're trying to status something that you know is going to be funded tomorrow, it won't let you actually make that status until tomorrow. So assuming the loan, uh, the loan was approved on the 6th, we will say that the CD was issued on the 9th. So back on the right-hand side, we'll say the CD was issued on the 9th, and then we got the clear to close on the 10th, back to the left side. So it's a lot of hopping from the left to the right, as you can see. Say we got it at 11 a.m. Okay. Now, after this, um, we want to input our closed and funded dates. Now, if this was a correspondent loan, I'd be done here. I would not be, you actually wouldn't even have the access to status closed and funded. So, um, since this is a brokered loan, we're going to say that the borrower signed loan docs on September 12th and that the loan funded on the 16th. Click save. Now there is an alert message that always pops up after you add an approved date, or I'm sorry, after an application taken date. Just one second. Okay, so right here on the right hand side it says this file will be automatically withdrawn unless dispositioned within 30 days of the application date. So I know that by the end of this month or beginning of next, this will start going into effect. If you have an application taken date in the file, and there's been no status for 30 days, whether it be LE issued or approved, et cetera, just no disposition of the file, it will be automatically withdrawn. Um, so let's say you have a loan and you are just trying to you know, rework it or it's a potential lead, but a true app hasn't been taken. You're not sure if they're even gonna move forward, et cetera. It's just something that you wanna play around with as a duplicate, whatever the case may be. Um, best practice would be to leave the loan in lead status and refrain from adding an application taken date until you're actually taking the application and getting the file ready to be registered with a lender. So don't be alarmed by this warning. It simply is just a warning message. Um, even if you have an approved date in here, it's still going to give you this message just as a reminder. So as you can see at a glance in the upper left corner, this loan is now in funded status. So like I said, assuming this loan funded this morning, it's 240 right now. Um, I would be able to check the intranet to see this loan in there after the next system update. So our uh, intranet updates at 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. Um, I know that we've tried to push out some earlier in the afternoon, but um, don't want to promise when I'm not too sure. So um, we're going to stick with 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. still as our update date, or I'm sorry, our update times. So um, you could check after the next system update this evening at 8 p.m. or at the latest tomorrow morning, you should see the loan in the internet to request comp. Um, you will need to upload required documents to LendingPad for brokered files. You do not need to upload any documents for correspondent. However, um, for brokered loans, you will need to upload a copy of the credit report. The initial disclosures signed by all borrowers, if applicable, obviously there are some business purpose loans that don't require disclosures. Um, the credit package, if applicable, again, income, assets, et cetera. The signed final loan docs. Um, if this is a HELOC, you'll just need to upload the signed agreement. The final settlement statement or disbursement ledger. And a copy of the wire receipt or broker comp check from the remitter. So we require that you reach out to the remitter to request a copy of the incoming wire detail 
or broker comp check to confirm the broker comp amount that was sent to eMortgage Capital. So um, I'm not sure if Danny already has done this or I can um, just we'll copy and paste and put in the list of those required docs that need to be uploaded into a brokered file. Um, it's also in the loan officer guide, which we can have sent out to you guys as well. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much high level overview of what I wanted to cover best practices when requesting comp um, little nuances within the loan application to keep an eye out for. I do have a ton of training material um, being built out um, that we have readily available. It will be in the intranet. It's just not yeah. there yet. Um, so if there is something that you need more assistance with, always, always email LO support. We likely already have a training guide in place for what you need. Um, or we can hop into your specific phone if you want us to um, check out something or if you need more in-depth training on a specific area in lending pad. Danny, did you have anything you wanted to add? Thank you so much for um, sharing this great insight with us uh, this afternoon. I do have uh, a question that was asked in regards to um, when do we have to use the title integration? If you do have, uh, maybe you can elaborate a little bit more as to when we can use the title integration. Yes. So within the title integration, um, is this more so like if you have a company that you want integrated into LendingPad or when you would essentially have the option to use that? Um, the question just stated, when do we have to use a title integration? So I mentioned that okay. uh, we don't have to necessarily use it. It's yeah. just a resource that's available. Um, right. So that's okay. more or less what I was able to relay on that. Okay, perfect. So yeah, with the title integration, you don't have to use it. Um, we have First American Mortgage Solutions, Summit Settlement Services, and Unisource integrated already within LendingPad. Um, if you go back to the Actions tab here where we were pulling the closing fee quote, running a U.S. credit report, you can click Send next to Title Integration. And you can see a dropdown of those three options. Um, so let's say I wanted to go with Summit Settlement. Um, I can make my request type uh, just a request for a title fee quote. Um, my transaction is a refinance and it's an owner occupied property. So from there, I could send my request to get a title fee quote. Um, that's just with Summit Settlement. You can submit a request for a title fee quote or to open title directly with those other two companies within the title integration section. Now, I have had this come up before where a loan officer wanted a specific title company integrated into lending pad. We do have the option to get this set up. I actually set up the summit settlement one, but the only thing is, is that title company already has to have the capability to be integrated with lending pad. So um, if that ever comes up, just email LO support. We'll be able to determine if it's even a company that can be integrated. If it can, um, then that title company will also know the next steps on how to work with us to get that set up. Um, like I said, that's only come up once with Summit Settlement, but if it does, just email LO support and we can tell you either way, like, yes, this is a company that can be integrated into LendingPad or no, you know, not all uh, title companies have the ability with their software to be integrated with LendingPad. So that's why I say just email LO support and we can tell you either way. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much, guys. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to L Support. Um, there's another question is we have to enter in the title escrow and appraiser company under key service providers in overview on brokered or core files? Uh, no, you do not have to utilize this feature at this time, um, but you absolutely can. It is not a requirement. Um, there are a ton of features within LendingPad that we encourage you guys all to take advantage of, mostly to keep everything organized and just up to date for yourselves. Um, however, you are not required to input the key service providers in this section, but you can. I know that there are quite a few people that do as well. Cool. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for um, joining us this afternoon. As always, this recording will be available in the EMC way under trainings and resources. Uh, we can also uh, provide you with additional guides. As always, the best way is to go ahead and reach out to LO Support at Emory's Capital, and then we can uh, support you the best way we can. More questions? Great. Love it. If we use Track or Track Plus, how do we get the closing costs? 
Oh, that is something I am not too sure with as far as track um, would go. Danny, do you? Yeah, yeah. To, to me, yeah, one? yeah. So track and track plus is basically uh, the, their title as well as, um, you know, the title and their closing, um, you know, service that UWM has uh, to offer. Uh, me personally, I think there's a couple of things. One is... Um, the original setup of a file in lending pad meaning i'm having in a conversation with a potential client i'm doing estimates and so forth so if that is the case those fees would apply from third parties you know standard credit um you know the title company escrow company etc for those um you could do two one of two things you can reach out to your ae and potentially get an estimated fee uh worksheet just to be able to engage with a client with some potential estimates. Um, I personally, if I was originating still and, and I was considering um, using track or any other closing agent, I would, I would just use the, um, the, the integrated fees in lending pad, uh, pad them a little bit. Uh, and then once you actually submit the file, then you're going to go and uh, submit those uh, uh, disclosures through um, UWN's portal. In other words, you're never going to disclose out of a uh, lending pad. That's just to, you know, get some initial forms to be able to um, get some sort of commitment from the client. You're always going to disclose out of UWM portal for those type of files. So to answer the question without going in circles, um, how do you get the closing costs? You'll get them directly from track or track plus if you want to integrate them into pad. If you're at, a, at the disclosure stage, you're not going to disclose a lending pad, so that's not going to apply. For me, if I was originating and I was starting uh, a file before going to UWM, I use the uh, estimate fees that are integrated into the system and just pat them. And hopefully that answers the question. Um, so, yeah. So, thank you guys for joining us. If you have any further questions, reach out to LL Support at emortgagecapital.com. Um, as always, any lending pad question will be forwarded to Nicole or Systems Trainers, and we will go from there. So thank you guys um, for coming. Thank you for joining us. As always, we're here to help you. Have a successful rest of your week. Perfect. Thank you, everyone. We will be um, hosting another training next Thursday at 2 p.m. I think next week we will be covering um, how to create tasks in LendingPad, either internally or for your borrower. That's something that I um, definitely want to go over with everyone. So just keep that in mind. If that's something you want um, more insight on, then be sure to join us next Thursday at 2 p.m. for that training as well. Beautiful. All right, guys. Great, thank, thank you for you. your time. Have a wonderful week.